Right now, joining us, Rick Morris from the FD. HLLounge.com. He's a national sports talk host based out of Cleveland, Ohio. Rick Morris, an old school friend. How are you, my friend? Oh, I'm doing excellent, Joe. Thanks for uh, for being on. Uh, I've always enjoyed having you on the FDH Lounge, and uh, thank you so much for returning the favor. I've been looking forward to this. Hey, buddy, always a pleasure to catch up with you. Like I said, based out of Cleveland, let's talk a little. We're going to talk a little hoop, and then talk a little football as pertains to Sixers, as pertains to all things NBA. Um, how are you guys doing out there, recovering from the loss in the finals after LeBron returns to town? Well, it's really funny because there's not the kind of devastation that you would think. And a lot of that has to do with the circumstances uh, of it, with uh, Kevin Love uh, first going down to that uh, vicious MMA arm bar, the dirty play from Kelly Olenek, with uh, Tristan, uh, I'm sorry, with uh, Kyrie Irving going down with yep. the, uh, the fractured knee in the uh, finals there. Uh, again, a lot of misery. I, I know in Philadelphia, you guys had a 25 year drought, and uh, it was funny. On, on my show, not long after the Phillies won the World Series, I remember saying to Jason Stark, I feel like a, a criminal in a bad movie. 25 years, I could do that standing on my head because <laughs> it's been 51 years, Joe. They haven't won in my lifetime, none of these teams. But you know what? 33-3 and three with this core intact after the midseason moves. Looking ahead to next year, they're all going to be back. It's not the despair you would think it is. It's a lot of hope looking forward. And you have the return of Kevin Love signing a contract. LeBron just signs a contract. So um, his legacy doesn't take a hit. Um, obviously, the circumstances surrounding uh, the situation. How did the fans... I guess, in terms of embracing LeBron even further than they had, because there was some friction and contention when he left town. Um, has that all been taken care of at this point? Absolutely. There's no question about it. And uh, you're actually using understatement there. It was pretty vicious. And, uh, again, uh, I'm not going to deny that I was a part of that, and a lot of us uh, were, because, again, it devastated the Cavs. Nobody wanted to see that happen. But as a sign of how all is forgiven and forgotten at this point in time here, there's not even any residual aggravation towards him right now. Tristan Thompson has continued to be, it's not exactly a holdout when you're a restricted free agent, but that deal hasn't gotten done yet, and there is very strong suspicion that uh, all the leverage is being placed there because of Rich Paul being his agent as well as LeBron's agent. Obviously, Tristan Thompson is due a big raise, but he's not a max player. I mean, he's at this point more sort of like what you guys would see with uh, Nerlens Noel as far as the offensive game not being there to match the defensive game. Nerlens Noel is not somebody you guys would give a max deal to. Tristan Thompson's going to come close to it, and yet nobody in this town is barking at LeBron about that. That tells you everything. Speaking with Rick Morris, National Sports Talk host, based out of Cleveland, the FDHLLounge.com. Rick, uh, in terms of the Sixers and the way they're going about building their team, basically Sam Hankey tearing the whole thing down to its core and trying to rebuild it through the draft. Now, if I can take you back through the, the way Cleveland uh, has done it, and you mentioned Tristan Thompson. He was the fourth overall selection in 2011, the top pick of the draft in 2011, also Kyrie Irving. Um, they missed on Anthony Bennett, the top pick overall in 2013. Acquired Andrew Wiggins with the top pick last year, traded him to Minnesota to get Kevin Love. So, and of course, we know about the LeBron thing. So basically, they've done it through the draft and of course with free agency, although LeBron was, you know, um, a basic, um, he was a draft pick of Cleveland back in the day. What do you think of how the Sixers are going about their business? Because I'd like to get a national perspective, and we all have our own versions of what's going on here, and I think that uh, anyone who's been around this team and has watched them for the last 32 years try to do it a different way. To me, it's refreshing. I love it. I think it's the best way to achieve the goal of winning a world championship. Your thoughts from a national view. As you've been saying through the show tonight, I agree with you. I agree with your commentary. I think this being the NBA, it is a uh, a league that is so overly weighted towards the megastar players, although ironically, and I, I feel bad for you guys, I think you're about to see that in two sports because the Phillies are about to overtly go down that path once Hamels is gone and 
uh, they start to make the other moves. They're going to have to, I think, because the farm system hasn't churned out enough guys to replace them. And, uh, again, the light at the end of the tunnel there is you look at where Houston is right now, and if you guys do the rebuild right, that could be you. But as far as the Sixers go, yeah, I, I think that's the one that's been underway. I don't blame fans for being impatient, though. And as far as uh, Joel Embiid uh, getting injured, look, it, you guys knew he was hurt when you took him. Uh, I will tell you this. Uh, I was screaming my head off for the Cavs not to take him with the number one pick a year ago. So that was one where you guys had your eyes open going in. Foot injuries, big man, what could go wrong there, right? So, But I think <laughs> overall... What he's been doing, what, uh, what what the front office has been doing, I think uh, overall has been working. The problem is, if there is one, I don't know that any of these guys come near the upside of a LeBron, a Durant, anybody like that. You're going to have to hope with the cap room you got, you can augment that great young core with that huge piece to put you over the top. Let's talk a little football, Rick, right now, because um... – as bad as things seem to be, at least in Philadelphia, historically, having not won a Super Bowl, having not won a championship since 1960, um, and this is said with all due respect, uh, the Cleveland Browns are in a situation where they can't seem to get the quarterback thing right. You look back at the drafts with Brandon Whedon and Colt McCoy, um, and brings us to uh, a guy named Johnny Manziel. Um, because we're in a situation here in Philadelphia, you know, obviously the Sam Bradford acquisition, getting rid of Nick Foles, having Mark Sanchez as a, as a backup, having an injured Sam Bradford waiting in the wings. But um, what's the situation in Cleveland, and how do you view the situation in terms of what Chip Kelly has done to give this team an entire, almost an entire makeover where he didn't necessarily have to do that much? Well, as far as the two franchises go, uh, there there are some uh, unfortunate common denominators, uh, not least of which is uh, Joe Banner. Thanks for sending him our way. By the way. <laughs> I was going to get to him at some point. I know we're up, we're running out of time, but uh, maybe next time we'll yeah. get to Joe Banner. Your thoughts on yeah. him? Well, you know, as far as it goes, look. I don't want to put the fear of God into anybody, but the Browns should be a very, very cautionary tale for the Philadelphia Eagles right now because. The entire history of the quote-unquote new Cleveland Browns has been new coach comes in, has a tantrum, I can't win with this, burns it to the ground, two years later, new coach comes in, new system. Chip Kelly couldn't win with what he had there. I would be very, very wary of uh, believing that. It, it, it has to look from the outside of change for change's sake, and that's never a good thing. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. We had Danny Pommels from Comcast Sportsnet on. He said it best when he said that the Sam Hinkie takes risks – uh, because he has to. That's part of the process in terms of the rebuild and tearing it down to its foundation in terms of what he's doing with the Sixers. But Chip Kelly, uh, I think, has taken risks unnecessarily. And, uh, you know, with every risk comes reward, but it also, you know, certainly is a dangerous proposition. So, uh, I mean, what are your thoughts in terms of getting rid of guys who may have been very talented but have been, you know, uh, guys of questionable character for what Chip Kelly wants in his locker room? Well, I don't blame him for wanting to, uh, to, to alter the roster to get it a certain way in terms of if you're talking about uh, character. You certainly hope not to sacrifice talent in the process. And, again, he's brought in some very talented players. And, uh, again, I've been somebody who has maybe been in the minority the last couple of years on uh, Sam Bradford. I know that uh, my regular football analyst on the FDH Lounge show, uh, handicapper Kyle Ross, he likes to call him Captain Checkdown. He wouldn't be very popular in your town right now. But <laughs> I think that was, People call healthy, Donovan that, Captain Checkdown. Yeah, yeah, it can work. It can absolutely work. And again, my thing is, does he have any knees left? Is either one of those two functional? If, if either one of them is, uh, I think he's an excellent quarterback. I'm somewhat in the minority on that, but I would, uh, you know, bolster you guys in making that argument. Where I get a little bit scared is, uh, somebody like Murray at running back. You look at Dallas that just ran him into the ground last year, much like when uh, the Milwaukee Brewers, remember when they got C.C. Sabathia as a rental and they just uh, wore him out and it was like, that's no problem. He's not going to be pitching, pitching for us next year. Same thing goes. Dallas knew they weren't going to re-sign him. you got a lot of mileage on that guy. Granted, Matthews is there, Sproles is there. You can kind of take the steam off him a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I, I just I don't know. I 
it, you know, the whole thing of if it's not broke, don't fix it. I understand what you're saying about going for an upgrade in character, but the the, the extent of the turnover troubles me. It's a wide turnover. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Rick Morris from the FDHLLounge.com joining us right now to talk a little uh, Eagles football. Um, Rick, this landscape in Cleveland with Johnny football and his rehab, and, of course, you have a coach out there, a local guy from this area, Mike Pettin. Um, what is the prognosis of that team? You mentioned the fact that the Browns are a cautionary tale, but uh, is Johnny football you know, long for the National Football League? He may not be, and I'll tell you what, he strikes me as somebody where he's not sticking around to hold a clipboard. I, I guarantee you that. His love of the game does not go that deep. If he's not a starter, <laughs> he's not in the game. It's going to be like a Tim Tebow kind of a thing. Now, again, not that uh, you know, Tebow doesn't love the game, but uh, we'll see how long this uh, quote-unquote comeback lasts because uh, I, I don't think he's in it if he's uh, not – a starter. Same thing with Manziel. Uh, this year, it's a little bit easier to make people believe. Last summer, when I would get asked, I would tell everybody, Brian Hoyer is going to be the guy. They're saying it. You have to believe it. And uh, same thing this year. You have to believe McCown is going to be the guy. Uh, Johnny Manziel may make it in there at a certain point, but uh, I'll let you in on a little bit of a local secret here. The big thing that everybody's gearing up for, if this team is bad enough this year, and they might be with the schedule, the savior is the local boy, Cardale Jones, next year. That is what everybody's hoping for. Uh, he could be our Ben Roethlisberger, if you will. Not that we love Roethlisberger in this town, but, <laughs> hey, we, we, we'd take one if we could get one, right? So, yeah, but you Cardale have to... Jones, local guy from Glenville, Ohio State, he'll be here next year if everything goes our way. And what would it take for everything to go your way to land Cardell Jones? Where do you think he's going to end up? Because he won a national championship. He started the year as the third-string quarterback. Uh, we know all about that. He may not start this year for Ohio State. What has to happen for you guys to land Cardell Jones? I have to believe he is going to start in the end. Uh, because, again, I think there's going to be too much of an outcry I if would... he doesn't. What it, what it takes, I said to a friend of mine, all we need is a good 4-12 and 12 season. And my friend <laughs> laughed and said, oh, yeah, well, how can you say that? I said, I'm a Browns fan. That's what, that's what you're going to say. You always have to look beyond the present year to the one afterward. And, again, a quarterback is just too big of a hole here. Wide receiver is a pretty big hole also. Uh, you know, you've got the corpse of Dwayne Bow and Brian Hartline and all these guys that were relevant a couple of years ago. Uh, one of those guys went to you guys, Miles Austin. Good yep. luck with that. I mean, he, he's still competent, but, uh, you know, he's not going to be the burner getting open downfield. You guys are probably primarily going to see him getting used underneath. But, uh, you know, Miles Austin was a decent contributor on this roster last year, which just shows you – the, the the scarcity there and scarcity that the Browns did very little to uh, upgrade in the off season. They they drafted a, a developmental guy, uh, Vince Mayo, in the fourth round, who is primarily in this town right now, known for being a LeBron James lookalike. That's his biggest claim to fame. Yeah, that doesn't sound all that promising out there, Rick. But always promising talking to you, my friend. We appreciate you joining the show. We'll catch up with you soon. All the best. Thanks, Joe. It's always a privilege having you in the FDH Lounge, and thank you for having me on this platform. All right, Rick. Appreciate it, my friend. Rick Morris from the FDHL Lounge, a national sports talk host based out of Cleveland. Things could be worse, folks. You could be in Cleveland with the likes of a Tim Couch, Spurgeon Wynn, Luke Who? McCown, Brady Quinn, Colt McCoy, Brandon Whedon, and Johnny Clipboard. Oh, forgot about Brian Hoyer. And uh, Josh McCown, how you feeling out there in Cleveland with that history of quarterback drafting? I am pissed off. Thank you, Harry Mays. Yeah, so things could be worse. Um, he said some interesting things. Miles Austin, one of their best receivers last year, yeah, two million dollars to come here and maybe be one of the five wide receivers here in uh, Philadelphia. Uh, should be interesting. Things aren't always as bad as they seem. But again, I think that Rick, uh, like myself, and agrees with Danny Palmer, is too much risk taken by Chip Kelly unnecessarily. I think that puts a lot of pressure on the folks who have come here um, to uh, take over and supplant some of the stars that have left. Uh, again, it's a wait-and-see process, much like it is with the 76ers. But you know... There's a certain amount of a six, uh, risk you assume with the uh, Sam Hinkie plan. I think Chip Kelly has gone over and above the risk versus reward factor in what he's done.